What's going on guys, hope you're all doing well. Now for today's video, I wanted to talk about my thoughts on the extended cut of Jurassic World Dominion. The movie has been out for a while now, and although the international version of the extended cut seems to still be rolling out for everyone else, I've seen it twice and had a lot of time to think about this version of the movie. So in this video, I wanted to go over the director's cut and talk about what I think of this whole period in Jurassic Park history. Now before I go any further, I want to mention to you guys that today's video is sponsored by CuriosityStream, the world's first streaming service addressing our lifelong quest to learn, explore, and understand. Offering up thousands of non-fiction titles, documentaries, and exclusive originals from some of the world's best filmmakers, this is the place to find fascinating stories that are entertaining without any of that reality show nonsense. CuriosityStream is the Netflix for nerds, the Hulu for history buffs, and the Disney Plus for the scientists in us all. And at under $20 a year, it's extremely affordable, coming out to about $1.67 per month. CuriosityStream has always been the perfect sponsor for this channel due to their wide selection of dinosaur documentaries, just like this one called Ancient Earth, which I'm sure a lot of you have heard of before. Anytime you get a combination of dinosaur visual effects with real-world paleontology thrown in for good measure, you've got a cool thing going for dinosaur docs, and this service is full of them. CuriosityStream is the entertainment brand for people that want to know more, and it's available on Roku, Android, Xbox, iOS, Chromecast, Amazon, Apple, and several smart TVs as well. New shows come out every week, so whether you want to know about about science, sports, music, technology, nature, or history, you can find it all on CuriosityStream. Just go to CuriosityStream.com slash Clayton for unlimited access to the world's top documentaries and nonfiction series, and just for you guys, use promo code Clayton, and you're going to save 25% off, which comes out to about $14.99 a year. So click the link below or go to CuriosityStream.com slash Clayton and save 25% off right now. This is an extremely affordable deal compared to other streaming services that I think you'll enjoy, so once again, thank you to CuriosityStream for sponsoring today today's video. Now, back to Jurassic Park. So, it took me a while to make this video because I'm not gonna lie, Dominion really, it didn't sit right with me in the theatrical cut of the movie. I, I was really annoyed, to say the least. I know a lot of people liked it, and I am a big fan of Jurassic Park, but personally, the movie didn't really hit me the way I wanted to, so I watched the extended cut, and my general thoughts on it are that I like it much more than what was in theaters. I think it's a slightly better movie, but the things that are improved here are pretty significant. I don't think it's great. I still think that me as a fan, I'm always gonna be a Jurassic Park 1, Lost World Jurassic Park. I think the first two Jurassic World movies did ring a chord pretty well. They have issues too, but I really like Fallen Kingdom's aesthetics and the way J.A. Bayona directed that movie. I really like the plot of Jurassic World. And I wanna talk about this one the extended cut because it's taken me a long time to formulate my thoughts and I have a lot to say. But by the way, before I go any further, if you guys ever see anyone in the comments section claiming to be me, they're using like my logo or avatar or whatever, and they've got a telegram number or something and they're telling you, you want a free PS5 or that's all BS. There's a lot of people that are having that spam all over their channel. I'm trying to stop it as best I can. If you see someone like that, flag them. Now to get to this movie, the extended cut is slightly better. The first half is way better because it actually fleshes out story points and the T-Rex's revenge plot, which is just strange to even say, but that stuff is better in the movie. There's a lot of good additional scenes added in, particularly one with Rain Delacourt, where Owen has to hand off his Parasaurolophus that he's just kind of wrangled up. That's a really good scene. I wish that was in the theatrical cut because it doesn't make much sense for the whole animosity between them besides the fact that he takes Maisie. It's like, well... How did he know that that was the same guy that followed him because he never saw him in the theatrical cut watching him? It's just weird. This extended version makes more sense. There is another extended scene with Dodson and Mamadou Athi's character Ramsey in the server room that I think is really good too. And it highlights Campbell Scott's acting as well as Mamadou Athi's. They're really good in this movie. I just wish that some of the material that they were given was better because even though I like the extended cut more and I do think it's a much better paced film, extremely, it's edited completely differently with the now this stuff. The first thing you see in the theatrical cut is that Mosasaurus attack and that's like the last thing you see in the now this footage in this version. It's a way more articulate and straightforward cut of the movie. Now, unfortunately, the second half, it's just not working for me because it's just a re 
remake of other Jurassic Park movies I've seen before to a T, and I don't know why you wouldn't just watch those over this one. I will say that in order to do this video, I actually had my mom watch this movie with me because she'd never seen it before. She didn't see it in theaters, and she was really critical when I was growing up at the Lost World Jurassic Park. Now you might be saying, why would a Jurassic Park fan want that? But it's because I want to kind of anchor myself in like Normieville. That way I can kind of get a view for why some people feel the way they do in a general consensus sort of way. And ironically, okay, so here's what she had to say. She liked the movie, but she said the first half is like a Hallmark chick flick. And I agree completely. It's filmed like one of those cheesy, very low budget Christmas romantic comedy things that you'd see on TV. And I just, I don't know why that was the goal. She also said it's clearly aimed at younger audiences. Some of the stuff is more fast and furious. And the only one she personally thought it was better than was Jurassic Park 3. I understand completely where she's coming from. And you know, it's funny because the big thing that she told me at the end was how ironic it was that the Jurassic World trilogy ended up repeating the mistakes of the Jurassic Park trilogy. Trilogy. Uh, Jurassic Park and Jurassic World, everybody seems to love mainly. The Lost World and Fallen Kingdom are dark and cool, but they're, they've got this level of silliness sprinkled throughout. And then Jurassic Park 6 and 3 are just so profoundly ridiculous compared to the other movies that it is... It's so noticeable you can't turn a blind eye to it. When it comes to my personal thoughts on all of this, I think the extended cut of Dominion's a little bit better because the pacing is way improved. It does make the first half better when you see stuff like Blue attack people. I mean, I just, I feel like they've been defanged, the Velociraptors and the dinosaurs in general, so much in this movie that it's just good to see anything like that happen. But there are other elements too. I will say Bryce Dallas Howard is really, really good in this movie. Uh, in fact, I'd say that her acting is some of the best that she's ever done in the series. And it's funny, when the Therizinosaurus scene rolled around, I, I was like, you know, this is one of my favorite scenes in the movie. And she said, oh, is that because it's like the lost world? And I was like, yeah, you already know. <laughs> there are scenes like that in this film that I really, really like. But uh, there's other stuff, man. I'm telling you, normal people don't enjoy when you dumb down Jurassic to a level of it being just so noticeable. Like, there's a scene when... The, when Kayla's plane crashes into the ice, my mom was like, shouldn't they be shivering when they're like walking out on the, uh, on the ice? I'm like, oh, just you wait, just you wait. And then when Owen falls through the ice and you know, Chris Pratt makes it out through the elevator, she just burst out laughing. Like there's no hypothermia. There's no tension with him like being freezing to death or anything. It's just all of that has been jettisoned out the window. Jurassic Park's never been very grounded. However, there's a huge difference between the audience not knowing scientific facts about a pyroclastic flow or a Mercedes Benz hauling trailers over the edge of a cliff. You have to know science to a degree there. You don't have to know science just falling through ice water. You've seen it many times in movies. People die from hypothermia. Like, that's just a thing. Normal people know that. This movie crossed the line so many times with suspension of disbelief, and especially with convenience. Like, there's a part where... I love the scene where Bryce Dallas Howard's about to get spit on by the Dilophosaurus, but the way Owen stops it, I like that, but it's so convenient that they show up at that very moment. It's also very convenient that the Jeep falls with Ian Malcolm, Maisie, Alan, and Ellie right at the feet of these people after they've just met up. It's also very convenient that there's a complete motorcycle gassed up with the keys ready to go for Chris Pratt to jump on and ride away. And the same thing is true with DeWanda Wise and Bryce Dallas Howard in the truck that they're driving. At least in Fallen Kingdom, you see the people actually abandon the car that was supposed to go onto the boat. So it makes sense for keys to be in there. But in these situations, it's like a very obvious thing. Like it's just like cutting corners. And I don't understand why that happened, but my theory is that, you know, there was a rumor going around for a while that Jurassic World 3 was actually supposed to be a two-parter. And from what it looks like, Battle at Big Rock may have been what they originally planned for Jurassic Park 6, and this may have been Jurassic Park 7. So I don't know if it had anything to do with COVID or if there's a you know decision made behind the scenes, but this just feels very out of left field for me as a fan. The locusts are an interesting idea, but and they're better in the extended cut for sure. That is a better version of the movie. But I still feel like they come out of nowhere and the promise at the end of Fallen Kingdom was going to be that the dinosaurs were going to be the big issue. But um, you know, 
even apart from that, I will say dinosaur designs in this movie are better than in the three previous movies. I really think that the Therizinosaurus, the Moros Intrepidus, I would go as far as to say the Di Dimetrodon design looks pretty good. The Quetzalcoatlus is awesome. Not a big fan of the Giga, but it looks okay in certain scenes. But you know what? Uh, th there are some good dinosaur designs in this movie. I would say they're they're debatedly the best since The Lost World. I like Jurassic Park 3's Spinosaurus, but I don't know. I'm, I'm more of a fan of the Pteranodon from Lost World than I am of the one from 3 because it's got sharp teeth. And by the way, the Pteranodon from The Lost World, or at least a variant of a male version of it, is actually in this movie hidden away. Now, that being said, I still think that the utilization of the dinosaurs here and there was a little too silly. And I don't know, man. There, there, there's just parts of this movie that I question why they went into the direction of a younger audience and they really did reel back a lot of the scares and there's there's really no good kills in the movie there's not much i can really say on that behalf of the film and uh i will say this though i'm only gonna watch the extended cut going forward it is it, for me it brought a two out of five movie up to a three out of five there's still loads of problems but you gotta understand man i'm a fan of jurassic park i'm not going to like you know, really choose to watch a theatrical, watered-down version of a movie that I already think was disappointing in the extended cut ever again. So, yeah, there's that. Now, I will say, I think one of the, the big things for me, and I might do a future video on this, one of the big things that's missing in this film is the man versus nature element that seems to almost have been completely abandoned, which is a shame because that was a very big part of, you know, the Jurassic Park movies I grew up on. And, you know, for five or six movies the main warning has been don't let the dinosaurs get out don't let the dinosaurs get out we can't control the dinosaurs if they get out out it's going to be really really bad but then you know and fallen kingdom promised that we would see something like that in the next one but then you get to this movie and it turns out that oh it's not a big deal if the dinosaurs get out there's no big issue for ecosystems and the movie's message is actually coexistence which i i, I gotta be honest man i kind of hate because you, you can't spend a whole franchise warning of you know you can cannot control genetic power and then when you get to this movie it turns out you can control the dinosaurs you've got an aerial deterrent system that makes sure that the pterosaurs don't go anywhere then you've got these little laser beams that you can put on dinosaurs to control who attacks who and then on top of that you've got dinosaurs that can be controlled by brain impulses a chip in their brains that literally sends them to wherever you want them to go and at no point in the movie do the dinosaurs defeat the technology in the way that they did in the first draft Jurassic Park where you know it's kind of like an oversight in lysine contingency or breeding they are getting so uh, vast and numerous that it's impossible and it was man's hubris that brought it down in this movie the dinosaurs take a backseat to the locusts and it's not really much of man versus nature so much as it is we made a major mistake with science so how are we going to fix that mistake well it's not through man versus nature and naturalism we're just going to use more science and that's fine and all but I think that defeats the purpose of what Jurassic Park kind of not just the first movie, but all of the previous movies. Owen's training the raptors, that was always seen as like, he can't technically do it. Like, he had to imprint on them, they turn on people, they viciously kill the engine group. I don't know, man, when you get to this movie, the raptors are, you know, it's funny because in Fallen Kingdom, the implication is like, dude, there's raptors out, man. There's velociraptors and they hunt and kill people and they're intelligent. And then you get to this one, it's like, oh, there's a raptor living in my backyard. It's fine. It's fine. It's just blue. And I'm just watching it. I'm like, I don't know, man. I just don't, I don't buy into it as much as I did in the other films. And especially when you go back to Jurassic Park 3 and they're, it's a little silly, I will admit, but they're talking about how they become the dominant life forms on the planet. It's hokey, but I kind of wish they went in a direction more of a planet of the apes, you know, planet of the Jurassic Park dinosaurs, but they didn't do it. And it's, it's a bit of a bummer. I, I will honestly say now that being said, this movie is so much better when you watch the extended version it does run long but Ian Malcolm is able to shine a little bit more here because the lines he's given and it's not even additional scenes it's just the fact that the movie's paced a little bit better I was able to absorb more of what he was saying and he kind of falls more into the lost worldy role here and there I love his line where he's talking about beta he's like and you gave it a name how about that I just think that's that's classic Dr. Malcolm where he's scolding Dodson is great there's other scenes where he kind of chews up the scenery and becomes really cool I love the scene where he gets in the jeep and his work I love the Ramsey character by the way he's he's really really good in this movie I'd love to see more of him in future films and that actually brings 
brings me to my final thoughts on this movie and where they want to take it, because Colin Trevorrow has said that he took something that was deemed unfranchisable, and his mission was kind of turn it into something that was franchisable. I will say, I have heard the rumors that they don't want to bring any of the legacy cast back, whether it be Owen, Claire, Alan, Ellie, Ian, anybody like that, and they just want to go with DeWanda Wise and Mamadou Athi, and, and I, I guess possibly Deshaun Lockman. I don't know completely about that. I will say this, please... For the love of God, if there's any way you can do it, can you please keep Jeff Goldblum somewhere? Because, you know, it's funny. When people ask me who is the centerfold of Jurassic Park, I actually think John Hammond. But Richard Attenborough has passed away. And if there's going to be more of these movies made, can we please have Jeff Goldblum in there somewhere? And I know other people have other lives and they want to do other things and move on their career or go down different avenues and paths. I would love it for all of these characters to be in a movie and they're together from start to finish. But like... Jeff Goldblum gave this really good speech in the bonus features of Jurassic World Dominion. It was on the set of the movie. And as a fan, it's really good, man. He just basically says he, he wants his usage as an actor to be spent up as much as it can for the betterment of the audience enjoying the film. He cares about the Ian Malcolm character in the same way that I think a lot of us really do like that critique of modern worldview and hubris. And I really, I think you need him because we've gotten to a point where Jurassic Park is kind of so big. And even though we were told for 30 years that the dinosaurs cannot be controlled and that we will pay for the genetic manipulation that we've caused to end on a note of, oh, you know, it's fine. Let's just coexist. I don't like that. I think that goes against Jurassic Park, actually. And it makes, it kind of makes everything out like Malcolm was, I don't want to say wrong, but he was just not accurate. And dude, these are vicious animals that rip people apart and we've seen them do it for decades. I'm not, I don't want them to be monsters, but I do want the movies to be, to, I just want them to take themselves seriously. So with that being said, I know I've critiqued a lot of this film, but I will say the extended cuts, the only way I want to watch the movie going forward because it's paced much better as a film. It actually does make a lot more sense. The actors are given a lot more times to shine and the plot points hammer home way better. I just wish that the movie had not aimed for such a young audience in terms of what Lost World or Fallen Kingdom did. That's kind of where I want the series to go. And oh, 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 also, there's kind of a plot hole in the Jurassic World trilogy now because they've said that Maisie was Charlotte's creation and not Benjamin Lockwood's. And if that's true, then why did Benjamin Lockwood and John Hammond fall out? What happened there? Because his whole death scene is Eli Mills going, you know, John Hammond was right. It was an unholy thing you did. So it's like, okay, what did he do? Because he wouldn't have tried to clone Charlotte in the 90s because Charlotte was still alive. So weird, man. I, I, I don't even know if the writers thought of that. Bottom line, I will say this. The extended cut's better. I really do think that having the movie breathe more and just explain more of what's going on helped it tremendously. But I still feel like this was a very disappointing Jurassic Park film for me. I'm glad a lot of people other, you know, out there like it, a lot of fans. When it comes to Jurassic Park, The Lost World, that's kind of my movie, man. That's what I'm looking for in these films. Uh, Roland Timbo, Nick Van Owen, even Eddie Carr. You know, the Challenger trailers, the High Hide, the Lindstrad air rifle, Site B, Isla Sorna, the whole nine yards, man. And uh, Dominion's not the worst film I've ever seen, but I am not going to let up on my disappointment with it a bit. I have a lot of people I know that really love the movie, and I'm really happy for them because I don't. With that being said, guys, I'd love to know what you guys think about the extended cut. Do you agree with me that it makes the movie kind of better? I think it's a three out of five now, and that's coming from a fan. So if you wanted to be really objective with like critiques and criticism, it might be lower than that. But personally, that's what I feel like right now. I've never heard anyone say they prefer the theatrical version of the movie, but if you do, I would love to know why. Uh, that to me is a mess. But anyways, guys, I'm going to be doing a lot more videos in the future, I hope. Uh, I'm reading a lot more paleontology, and I'm trying to get more into the behind-the-scenes stuff that I can find for the earlier films, as well as these new ones. There's a lot of cool stuff that I want to go over, but whatever your own thoughts and opinions happen to be, I'd love to hear them in the comments down below. Now, before I go, I'd like to thank all of my game wardens and engine executives. 
as well as all of my park workers and engine hunters as well. You've all helped my channel immensely and I'm incredibly grateful for all of that support. Now I'd like to thank you all for watching today's video and hope that you enjoyed the content. If you feel like I deserve it, I'd appreciate the like and hope that you all consider subscribing. I'll see you all in the next video guys and as always, take it easy.